Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, this parallel session number 15.2, um, focusing especially on assessment. My name is uh, Jens Benenson. I'm from uh, Aarhus University, and I will be the, uh, the chair of this session. And I think we will uh, be hearing for at least three uh, super interesting uh, papers. I'm not sure about the last one, but uh, the first three one will definitely be interesting. So um, that will be a paper on uh, developing and assessing teamwork um, with enhanced team-based learning approach. Uh, then we will hear about uh, implementation and evaluating of a new PBL assessment mechanism. Um, and uh, towards an intuitive and objective assessment for project-based modules. And last, we'll hear about uh, how to assess students' professional criticism skills. Um, we would uh, do this uh, session as most of the other sessions where I have participated, that we will start by uh, showing the uh, pre-recorded video. And then after that, we will have a... Um, question and answer period for that paper. And then we will move to the next paper after about 14 minutes or so. So I will uh, time this and uh, I will ask if uh, you could play the first video by um, Ling um, about developing and assessing teamwork with enhanced team-based learning approach. Good afternoon, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Gyo Ling, and my co-author, Dr. Tao. We are from the Singapore Polytechnic School of Architecture and the Built Environment. It is my privilege to share with you our action research on teamwork development and assessment with enhanced team-based learning approach. Our context of this action research is the three challenges we faced in one, developing teamwork skills, which is often unstructured. Students often tend to focus on project and product and neglect progressive work. Three, teamwork monitoring and assessment is often not clear and sometimes neglected. Thus, assessment becomes inaccurate and unfair. So we decided to use team-based learning enhanced with our current project-based learning model to overcome these challenges. Team-based learning, in short TBL, is designed to provide students with both conceptual and procedural knowledge. It has four essential elements, starting from forming effective groups to accountability for quality work. These are two very important teamwork elements. In terms of learning, feedback to students has to be timely and frequent. Assignment has to be designed to promote learning and team development. Further to these essential elements, we brought in the current, our current project-based learning and thus a TBL lesson is divided now into three sections. Preparations before class, readiness assurance in class and application in project in and outside the classroom. Students are strategically organized into permanent groups for the entire semester. Students must study the scheduled topic before coming to tutorial class as they are required to take a readiness test which require them to first complete as individual and then they third they take the exact same test again as a team, coming to consensus on team answers. At the end of the test, students receive immediate feedback and clarification on any misconceptions arising from the test results. After the readiness test is completed, the remaining time is spent on mini projects that require them to apply what they have learned to encourage students to remain reflective throughout the project journey, they are required to write journal and record it as a blog in LMS. These blogs 
are only visible to the team and the facilitator. In a nutshell, our approach to develop teamwork skill is to adopt a blended learning which requires students to learn both face-to-face -face and out of the classroom with team-based learning as the primary enabling element while requiring students to self-regulate in a guided environment with the help of technology and PBL. Our role here is to create opportunities for them to self-regulate their learning with TBL and PBL. Here's a detailed lesson plan and schedule of structural steel design and CAD module and Dr. Tao is the module coordinator. With his expertise in this uh, module, he has instrumentally redesigned the project task and schedule to align with team-based learning. This is a core module offered in semester two of year three in the Diploma of Civil Engineering, which is also a final year project integrated into the course curriculum since we first adopted the CDI approach. As you can see in this slide, module content are designed and organized in topic to be in scene with the mini project task. From week two to week six, it involves project tasks that needed prior knowledge for team to work on, while TBL lessons focus on new knowledge foundation. In week 11 to 17, <clears throat> involves project tasks that needed applications of new knowledge, while TBL continues to focus on new knowledge needed in the project's tasks. Majority of the class time is used for team assignment and focus on using cost content to solve problem in a real-world project. Our role has shifted from delivering content to designing and managing the overall instruction process. Students' roles shift from being passive recipients of information to one of accepting responsibility for their learning. This is our teamwork development facilitation approach which starts from team forming to team process monitoring and mentoring. Then finally, assessment using the self and peer assessment and rubrics. This slide shows our teamwork measurement competency adapted from the CAT need uh, tool. The five competencies are shown in the slide. Contribution, interaction with team teammates, keeping the team on track, expecting quality as well as demonstrate knowledge, skills and abilities to do excellent work. Often students are asked to form teams to do an assignment or project but have no idea what to expect from their leaders or from, other, from each other. As a consequence, the team evolves unrealistic expectations and result in frustration and cynicism. Thus, to form effective team at the start with the correct team uh, mindset is important. This slide shows the five activities to form effective team with first familiarization with Blackboard group, which is a tool to manage and monitor teamwork process. Secondly, to confirm teamwork um, membership roles and responsibility. Thirdly, to agree on team rules and operating values, followed by the project specification requirement understanding as a group. After they have understand fully as a group about the project, they then agree on plan and schedule where they drafted their gun chart. For assessment of teamwork, we use self and peer assessment on the five teamwork competency as shown earlier. To assess the teamwork journey, we use simple and process-driven rubrics 
which is made known to the students at the start of the project. Student reflections on their learning experience in this new teaching approach were positive and encouraging. Learning reflections together with the percentage rating have indicated that students recognize the benefits of the enhanced TBL. What interests us is the learning reflection of a weaker and less motivated student as shown here. TBL is an approach making opportunity in a branded learning environment with group work central to both exposure and enhancement of learners' ability to apply the cost content to their project work. In conclusion, this paper represents the work of a few iterations of an action research in finding new approaches to develop teamwork and assessment. Further investigation will continue and further improve and validate the development teamwork skills and its assessment in addition to team-based learning as well as cell and peer assessment in assessing teamwork. With this, I thank you. Thank you very much, Ling, for uh, the presentation. Thank you. So, questions, uh, comments to, uh, to Ling? So, Natha, please. Hi, uh -huh. thank you, uh, Gopling, for a nice presentation. I'm uh, very interested in your assessment of the team. And you mentioned that to form a proper team. So I would like to know what is the best way? Um, how do you declare this is a proper team? And is there any criteria when we form the student team? Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, usually, uh, in the beginning, we try forming team. Uh, we let the student form their own team. But uh, when we bring in TBL, uh, we must strategically form the team uh, using their academic result because they are from the year three. So using their GPA, we try to put the weaker one and the best student together. That's what I mean by strategically uh, form the team. Thank yep. you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Sri Purin. Yes. Uh, how can you so sure that uh, your peer assessment is reliable tool for you? Okay, the peer assessment uh, tool, we use the CADME tool, which uh, has, a, a, someone has already done a lot of research on that. So, we are just using that tool to do the peer assessment. And that too uh, actually has uh, a formula to, um, to eliminate free rider, eliminate uh, people who, who sabotage each other and so forth. And, and in fact, this is one of our big initiative in SP now, looking into teamwork measurement. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Ellen. Manage students who not have team mindset, focusing yeah. on self only, thinking mm -hmm. and helping others will jeopardize their grades. Okay, um, so the self and peer assessment, before we start, we have to be very clear to the student that these are the competency uh, we are looking for. So as the saying goes, right, mm -hmm. uh, assessment will drive behavior. So once they know, hey, this is how you want to uh, assess me, and therefore, I must make sure, you know, I made it. Yeah. So usually, if they do not have the team mindset, that will at least bring them on board first. And then uh, followed by our facilitation to help them to enjoy the journey. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you. I think we have to, uh, to move on to the uh, next presentation. So thanks a lot, Ling, for Thank you. a very interesting presentation. Yeah, welcome. So um, the next presentation is uh, by Mohammad Fat. Um, implementation and evaluation of a new PBL assessment mechanism. So could you please show the uh, video? And then while the video is running, you are more than welcome to post questions in the chat. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Uh, Mohammad Farhat. 
uh, from the Australian College of Kuwait. Uh, I will present our presentation entitled uh, Implementation and Evaluation of a New PBL Assessment Mechanism. So I will start with a brief introduction about ACK. Uh, what's uh, project-based learning at ACK? The assessment mechanism of uh, PBL. Uh, I will uh, quickly show you what uh, our previous uh, assessment mechanism so we can compare it with a new one. And finally, I will give you some, uh, some results from the evaluation of the new assessment mechanism. Uh, so ACK established in 2004. It's one of the first private universities in Kuwait. Uh, we offer uh, uh, courses at two levels, diploma and bachelor. Uh, we have engineering courses, business, aviation, and maritime. So uh, PBL has emerged as an effective way of learning and teaching uh, since, since its foster enhancement of transversal competencies along with the technical ones. Uh, so implementation of PBL at ACK is aligned with the CDIO uh, process as students require to conceive, design, implement, and fully operate uh, for a project. Uh, so compared to traditional, uh, traditional uh, lecture-based learning with PBL, so PBL has many advantages such as student in independence, self-confidence, increased motivation in the learning process, and finding solution for real world projects. Uh, so PBL uh, is an integral part uh, of our curriculum. Uh, usually students work in a group of four to five to solve a real uh, life scenario. Uh, during this project, they will, uh, they will require the application of the content of many courses uh, during the semester uh, or previous semesters. As an example here, uh, the electrical engineering course uh, program. So we have one course of PBL in each semester. Uh, and in the last semester, we offer two courses as PBL. Uh, so the main, the main challenge in, in PBL is the assessment. So that's been highlighted many times by students and faculty. Uh, students usually work in a group, but when we assess them, we assess them as an individual or as a group. Um, so every institute around the world still still facing, many institutes, I would say not every, so many institutes around the world are still facing uh, uh, challenges uh, to develop the right assessment for the right group of students. Uh, but maybe this assessment mechanism in one institute, it will not work in a different institute. This is due to environment, uh, to environment uh, social, technical aspects, and so on. So developing the right assessment items is extremely important in ensuring that students acquire the right skills and knowledge. So in this paper here, in this presentation, I will uh, briefly show you our new assessment framework. So but I will start with the previous one so you can, we can compare it later on to the new one. So in the previous assessment, uh, we used to assess students twice a semester, so once in the middle, once at the end. And uh, in the middle, students used to have a presentation we call Viva Voce, it's an uh, oral exam. Uh, and they do the same at the end of the semester. Uh, so there is a course portfolio, they submitted it twice in the middle of the semester or at the end. Uh, but this course portfolio, it can be different from one course to another course uh, based on the nature of the course. Uh, but in the new assessment uh, mechanism, so instead of having only two assessments, one in the middle, one at the end, so we have, uh, we, we have four. So, and this is distributed along the semester. So uh, students, they can have a better feedback, on uh, ongoing feedback and so on. So it's better to explain it. I will go through an, as, a, as an example here uh, about embedded operating system course, where we have four assessments. Uh, each assessment can be divided into sub-assessments, uh, depends on the course. Um, and, it's, and even the assessment are di distributed between uh, group and individual. So students can be assessed in such as such assignment as an individual or in a group. Each assignment, each assessment from this, uh, it will cover all the course learning outcomes. Let's start as an example with the progress report. It's a group work and it can contain multiple, multiple parts inside this progress report. Uh, so this is a, uh, submitted between week four and week six. Uh, as an example, the technical evaluation, it will start from week one and it will carry up to week 14. So this is a continuous assessment for the whole, uh, the whole semester. So students, they have two presentations, one at the middle of the semester, one at the end. Uh, students, they have a workbook where they, um, where they uh, document all their work. They have a final report uh, or it can be as, uh, uh, 
final report at the end, they will submit it. Uh, they have a final code and the final prototype. And maybe in a, in a final report, they can include the user manual of their prototype. So uh, what we did, uh, so to evaluate this new assessment mechanism, so we did a survey over uh, 62 students in, in year four. Uh, those students, they, they had experience on the previous semester, so they know the old assessment mechanism and they, they're familiar with the old one and they are practicing the new assessment mechanism. So uh, as an example, uh, so uh, those participants, so we have 45% of those participants, uh, they have practical experience. Some of them with more than 10 years practical experience. So this means that so those students, they can evaluate PBL, uh, uh, better evaluate PBL in terms of teamwork, uh, organizational and transversal skills. We have a good uh, distribution between male and female. Students are between 18 and 44. Uh, years. So some results from uh, from this survey. Uh, so we find out six, 82 percent of the students they prefer AC as uh, they prefer PBL over 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 traditional courses, and they believe PBL improves their management, leadership, communication, creativity, uh, critical thinking skills. Um, with reference to the new assessment mechanism, so 61 percent of the students. Uh, they prefer the new assessment over the previous one and 60, 67% of the students, they believe uh, they agreed the new assessment uh, mechanism. Uh, it's better defined uh, and it's more clear uh, for their indiv uh, individual and the group work. Uh, in conclusion, uh, so uh, we have a new assessment mechanism. Uh, we have a good satisfaction from students, from instructors. Uh, uh, it, it will enhance the grading process and so on. So I was going a bit a bit fast due to the time limitation. So I'll, I will be I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you indeed. So uh, comments, questions, please. While you're still thinking, I I could start with one. Um, so so assessment is uh, there are the the student being assessed and there are the SSE or whatever we should call it, the teacher. Um, so, so how is kind of the, the balance uh, between the work that you did with your first assessment method and then the second assessment method? Because it's, it seems to me like you have kind of doubled the work for, for you as a teacher. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh... Uh, actually, yes, uh, indeed, yeah, we doubled the work for the teacher, but uh, for the student, it's much, much improved. Uh, uh, but what, what they submit in the first assessment, usually they don't submit it in the second one. So maybe as an example for a progress report, so they submit up to week eight, so to the middle of the semester. They don't have to submit it again at the end of the semester. So Actually, yes, there is extra work for us, but uh, for the benefit of the students, yeah, it's much, much better. Sure. So, and there's a question here. How do you ensure there is no free rider? Uh, yes, this is always, I think, it is there, especially when they form their group, because we allow the students to form their group. Uh, but actually, this is easy to figure it out during the presentation when uh, we have two presentations in the semester. Uh, we have technical evaluations where this is individual, so it's easy to, to figure out uh, everyone what exactly he's doing. Do you um, always expect? Just, just, just read it out or I can do it. Just yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Okay, so do you always expect one unique answer in PBL? Uh, if not, how do you develop the rubric? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, we are not expecting one one actually what happened usually we have we have a project different project every every semester so and um, what happens so the work is distributed among the, the group so um, and every student is expecting different question from another student so it's not not one unique answer for in, in pbl no so every 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 student he will face different questions uh, was it challenging to assess? Yeah, it is. It is a challenging, but uh, but with the presentation, with the technical evaluation, uh, because we're distributing the assessment along the semester, so it is a challenging, but it's uh, it's possible. So it's not it's not that complicated. 
And then we have the uh, uh, question about the COVID. Uh, kind of COVID-19 affects, affects the weight of the assessment. Mm. Uh, actually, uh, as, no, no, we, we're still having, so students, they're doing their everything online. They're doing the presentation online. Uh, uh, we didn't change anything, but what we changed, we changed the type of the project. So we did some project where it's possible to do it in simulation method instead of a practical. Before, uh, students used to build the prototype. Now they do everything uh, simulation. So this is the only change, but uh, we didn't change the weight. We changed the type of projects. So other questions, comments, please? While you're thinking, uh, I, I, I would like to ask you another question, if that's OK. Uh, is, it, is it so that kind of the more described evaluation method was what the students like? It seems like this new method was, was much more detailed and the uh, criteria were more kind of clear and well written out or stated you had rubrics and stuff like that compared to the previous one so so was it more that uh, rather than this four-step process or or do you have any comments on that it, it is it is yeah it is more detailed before students they have to have only there is they submit twice a semester um, so usually they don't get much feedback so they wait till week eight to get some feedback so if they want to improve, it's it's a little bit late. Uh, now actually they're getting their feedback in in go. So from week one they start getting feedbacks. Uh, so I think that's that's the main reason students they prefer this method. Hmm. We have a question from Carvin. Do we perform uh, sorry, this? Did... No, no. Actually, we do it. No, we do it and. Um, no, the whole, whole for the whole course for for the whole program. So not only in, in year four, for starting from year three. Uh, so we do it year three and four. Yeah. So last two years. Okay. And and coming back to this uh, to this questions about uh, whether it's the more structured way or not. So so how do you kind of support the students? How do you supervise the, their project work? Do they get feedback along the way or? Uh, yeah, actually, what we do, we do, we have a small, we have a max, maximum in a course, we have four groups. Mm -hmm. So uh, four groups and we meet them six hours a week. So um, actually like almost one hour and a half for each group. So there is a lot of time. So what we try to do, we try to, um, to divide this group at uh, this time among the groups. Um, so we give as a group feedback and actually we even give individual feedback. So we have the time even to meet individual students and we give them mm -hmm. these feedbacks. Hopefully I answered your question or. Yeah. So more questions, comments. <clears throat> we still have about a minute or so. Okay. So. Can I ask some question? Okay. So you said that uh, you use simulation instead of the real practice. Okay. Yes. So what kind of skill that you think the students miss the most during the simulation period like this? Uh, yeah, yeah. This is very, very good question. Actually, especially for me because I'm electrical. Uh, I teach electrical courses. Yes, they miss a lot. Um, but this is only was for one semester because uh, just we closed for one semester online and the following semester we went back on campus only for practical parts. So students, they do the simulation online, but when they need to, to perform the practical parts, they, they can go to the lab. So they missed the hand, hand on skills, but, uh, but only for one semester and now they are back to normal. Okay, so it happens here in my class also, I'm in electrical engineering skill also. Yeah. When, when students start to do hands-on on their own, it, it's a kind of awkward situation at that time. Okay. Yeah, it is, it is true, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but hopefully it's getting better soon. I think we are back to normal here. We're, okay. we're all hoping. Good for you. <laughs> we are in Thailand to... still missing that hands-on skill, so. Yeah. We're all waiting to get back to normal, I think, or some kind of normal. So yes. thanks a lot, Mohammed, for your presentation and Thank your, you your answers. You. So I think we will move on to the next paper by Chu Ling Chia.
uh, towards an intuitive and objective assessment for project-based modules. It's in, much, uh, in line with the previous one. So could you please uh, play the video? This is a presentation for the paper titled Towards an Intuitive and Objective Assessment for Project-Based Modules by Dr. Chia Chulin from School of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Singapore Polytechnic. This paper focuses its study on first-year engineering module, Introduction to Engineering, in short i.e., this module was instituted in line with the CDO model to introduce all the first-year students, which is about 800 students to the field of engineering focusing on design implement and operate experience using basic electronics circuit. In addition, students will be exposed to a range of generic process skills such as troubleshooting skills, creative and critical thinking, teamwork and communication. The photo shows the complete project where the students need to design, build and test for this module. In this module, students will first learn the basic skills required to complete the project. They were then expected to transfer what they have learned to create their own boards in a progressive manner. This is an example of the different stages the student has to go through while making their own board using a strip board. After the student has completed fabricating the board, the student is then expected to test the board using a test board provided in the laboratory. The teaching staff would then assess the student's performance using the traditional descriptive scoring rubrics as shown in the table. However, use of descriptive scoring schemes often result in differences in marking for the same piece of work. The differences in mark can arise from a number of sources. For example, individual own understanding of students' observed achievements and the given rubrics. It is also hard to maintain consistency in the rubrics interpretation for different boards with varied levels of complexity. All these challenges were heightened for this particular module as it involved about 40 classes each year with more than 20 teaching staff, comprising both full-time, adjunct lecturers and sometimes new lecturers. The traditional rubrics often expect teaching staff to award marks ranging from 0 to 100 or from 0 to a preset maximum score. However, it is not possible to have a different number of observable works performance to award students work at different phase of their board. When there isn't sufficient different observable works of students to reflect the range of possible marks, this can produce a wider difference in the marks awarded. In order to redesign an assessment that is easy to follow and coherence to learning outcomes, we first break down the project into pieces of work as shown in table. Based on the relative difficulty and importance of work, the individual boards were weighted accordingly as shown in the table. In the case of assessing the students and making the seven-segment board, the assessment was broken down accordingly to the work process and making the board. A list of all the possible observable performance was then listed. Once the evaluation criteria was established, Excel spreadsheet was then designed to capture all the evaluation criteria, weights and scores. To make the whole assessment process easy and intuitive, a drop-down list with all the project criteria such as optimal and neat layout, good and neat layout, etc. was listed. The figures show a screenshot on what a lecturer would see while using the spreadsheet for assessment. About two weeks after the end of the semester, an online survey were emailed to all the 24 teaching staff to gather feedback after using the new assessment spreadsheet. Though only 15 out of 24 teaching staff completed the survey, all but one gave the 5 or 4 as their responses to all the first 4 items. Only one respondent gave a low score of 2 to item 2 which means the respondent does not agree that the mark sheet can maintain consistency. However, all respondents do find it easy to use. Find the description clear and help them to provide consistent feedback on student performance. The next two questions asked for the respondents' comments. From the results, it indicate that improvement can be made by including the missed out criteria components. In addition to the 15 staff who did the survey, there were four staff who actually preferred to have a causal discussion with me on how the assessment can be further improved. These four staff members all commented that the assessment saved their time in the assessment and it was intuitive and easy to use. However, they found that a few observable criteria were missing and should have been included in the improved version of the assessment for the next run. 
The missing criteria mainly include the timely completion of the project and having more levels to assess the board completion and also consider rewarding students when they have shown to complete the project in the shorter time or uses very little resources. Though this approach not necessarily can overcome individual biases in the scoring, the act of selecting the most matching appropriate descriptors from the drop-down list provided in spreadsheet while inspecting students' submitted work can help to average some of these effects. Moving forward, the author will continue to improve the assessment by including the missing criteria making it more valid and reliable. Explore the possibility of gathering all the stats grading spreadsheet to perform do a comparative analysis against some summative assessment the students are taking. Explore getting student to perform their own evaluation using the same rubrics. In this manner, we can then understand if the student understand the assessment criteria and the staff expectations of their work. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you for watching. Well, thank you very much, Chu Ling Chia, for the uh, presentations. Questions, uh, comments? Any question? So, Karin, please. Yes, thank you, Chu Ling, for this beautiful presentation. I was wondering, I, and I probably didn't get it, um, so you have this rubric for the teachers, but do you show them to the students as well? Uh, during the, the semester? Uh, okay, I, I actually have a briefing to all the teaching staff because it's very new to them. So I show them how to use the Excel, show them what's the criteria before they begin using this Excel spreadsheet with the, all the drop down list. As for the student, I, I don't really give the student because this is my first time doing it, but I do have the plan to do uh, to improve it and actually provide them to do some self-assessment. Yeah, this one by next uh, action. <laughs> Maybe I could just comment because I do the same. I also have a rubric like this and I actually give it to the students beforehand because then we can discuss the criteria before they reach the exam. Mm, good, good. Thanks just, for Just sharing. a comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Good, thank you. So thank you, Karen, for your questions. Other comments, questions? I must say I'm I'm amazed with a course with 800 students and 24 <laughs> staff members. That that's something to handle. Um, so so how did you ensure the uh, the alignment with? Uh, I I assume that you have some learning outcomes. So so the assessment criteria are kind of I assume aligned with the learning outcomes. So so how do you how do you, how did you do that? Uh, the learning outcome is basically we because this module is a project module. We focus on the skill that the student have acquired after attending this, uh, completing this this whole module. So they because they are in their first year, so we want them to know how to translate from any schematic diagram to a street board. So we actually have this as a learning objective. So it, it will be something that we can observe. It is, it, it is in our learning outcome, but the question is when we actually give a descriptive a rubric, everyone has their own interpretation. So we have to hate it by <laughs> assessing that. So it's already online. I think the key thing is more about how do we make it more objective? Yeah. Okay, cool. And Sarah, you have a question? Yes, thank you for the presentation. Um, I just wanted to check what the the, the, may, the key changes were before and after. Um, so you created this tool. Is is it the differentiation of each grade that, that made it more clear for the ex mm -hmm. examiner? The main difference is that the original Ruby is uh, from 0 to 100. Okay, firstly, it's always from 0 to 10 or 0 to 100, 0 to a, to a maximum uh, marks. Uh, and we actually give the, the I mean, uh, this, is, this is what has been done in the past. We actually have a descriptive uh, scoring rubric, for example, very good. And then we have some description uh, that will state a range of marks, let's say zero to 20. Uh, so it's a range of marks. But the current, the current rubric is, is a drop down list. So it's a drop down list and we try to break down the, the project into, into something that we can observe. For example, if the student give me an optimal layout, uh, because we have taught this module for years, so we understand what is the meaning of optimal layout. They use less wire, they arrange their device in such a way they don't have to solder so much. 
and what is a fair layout. So we actually use, uh, we actually break down into something we can observe and we do not constrain it to zero to a maximum value. So this is the key difference. Thank you. Other comments, questions? So, so having all these uh, teachers and, and, and did, you, did you figure out or did you I have any kind of gut feeling or something like that, whether it was uh, quote unquote, only 15 of the 24 who, who answered your questionnaire. I, I, I in fact think that it is considered a good response because some of our colleagues just won't, won't bother to respond to you. But I do have some, they, they actually do not want to respond. They want to speak to me personally. So I thought that is also kind of a, a good thing because out of the 24 staff, some of them are part-time. It's quite hard to get them respond to the survey. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it's good to see that, that they, they feel that they are more kind of um, on even ground here, uh, that, that, they, uh, that they have a more kind of clear understanding of what, what they should assess. So I think that, that's very, very good. So other questions, comments? We still have a minute or two. Um, so there's still time to ask questions or give comments. No? Okay, then uh, thanks a lot, Kulin, for, for the uh, presentation. And I think extremely uh, good work and, and very thorough trying to, to make it very uh, coherent and, and, um, and in a good way so that everybody sees that that is good. What we call inter-rater reliability would be kind of the things that you're trying to achieve as far as I can see. So could we move on to the last presentation, Assessing Students' Professional Criticism Skills? Hello, my name is Jens Bennetson. Uh, I'm from Aarhus University and I'd like to talk to you about Assessing Students' Professional Criticism Skills. So this is uh, done in a context of a uh, mathematical course in a professional bachelor's program and a, a normal bachelor's program. It's a math course on uh, the second semester for the uh, bachelor program and the seventh or sixth or seventh semester for the professional bachelor's program. It's a five ECTS point uh, course, meaning it's uh, uh, about 150 uh, working hours for the students and the kind of goal for this course is that we want the students to be able to talk about uh, and evaluate the quality of uh, mathematical arguments, proof, uh, and etc. One could say that we would like to move uh, math from a noun where you talk about, well, uh, a mathematical calculation or something like that to a verb where you will actually use it as something where you uh, are talking about math. math, math. Kind of the um, the theoretical context here is that we would like to support what uh, uh, Ty et al. have called uh, evaluative judgment, meaning the capability to make decisions about the quality of work of self and others. Um, and for that, we uh, need to uh, to focus on how we can actually do and uh, develop our, especially our uh, assessment assistant uh in in this course and that's what i would like to talk about uh, today as ernest talk about uh, math is not just um doing mathematical calculations uh, solving your differential equations or what you would like to do but it has a lot to do with conversation uh you uh do a conversation in some kind of a symbolic um language you try to do uh, and pursue uh, other people about the kind of uh, value and the truth of your uh, argument that you're giving so so that is actually what we're doing and this is what we would like the students to be able to do to have this professional uh, communication where they can actually uh, evaluate and uh, f figure out whether uh, one what 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 other students are saying is to is uh, uh, the truth. It's uh, as I said uh, done within a course. Um, this course uh, is as always trying to be uh, aligned 
So we have these uh, learning outcomes, as you can see here. We have the pedagogical design, that's a flipped classroom course. So we have video lectures, we have uh, workshops where the students will work together and communicate together in class. Uh, they have the possibilities to uh, to do work with their mandatory hand-ins and they also do exam preparation in class. Uh, it's an oral exam because, as I said, we want the students to talk about uh, math and uh, what they do. As I said, uh, in order to actually be able to uh, enter the exam is that they hand in uh, some um, uh, math problems where they do communicate math in a written way, they do reviews of others, and they do presentations of uh, mathematical um, concepts. The examination is done uh, in a little different way, so it's done in groups of three. Uh, one is presenting, uh, the second is the first reviewer, and the third student is the second reviewer, and then we rotate. So next time it's the first reviewer will become the second reviewer, the second reviewer will become the presenter, and the presenter will become the first reviewer. And then the evaluation of their exam is actually done in a way where the presentation, they will present some kind of mathematical proof and talk about mathematical or mathematical concepts that account for 75% uh, uh, of their final mark. And the rest, the, the, uh, the one fourth, uh, is based on the quality of the reviews of the two, uh, the two other presentations that they have seen. Uh, this is, of course, something that is a little difficult for the students to understand, that they are evaluating and critiquing fellow students. So that's, uh, as I said, something that we do in class in order to make them aware that that's something they have to do. In order to, uh, to enhance that as well, uh, during the class, um, then they make video-based presentations. So they... Uh, videotape um, that's actually one of the exam questions where they kind of tell about well it could be logic it could be uh, induction proof techniques they tell about that uh, and then they are split into groups of three where they watch two videos um, some of the students have uh, produced and then the two others actually give critique to that and then at last we kind of take the students together in plenum uh, and then they watch a video, all of them, all of them and then uh, they give feedback on that. And then also I give feedback as a teacher, both on the video, but also on the feedback, because giving feedback is something that is pretty difficult for the students to figure out, well, what do you do? What is this? It's not uh, critiquing their communication skills. It's not critiquing their kind of presentation skills, it's critiquing their mathematical skills. So what is it that they have said that was convincing in their arguments? What is it that is not so convincing? What could they actually improve on if they want to do? As I said, we also have some additional support for evaluative judgment. They do, uh, as part of their hand in, they do peer feedback. Uh, so when they have handed in this, they can do that in groups of two. Then they have to give feedback uh, on uh, two or three other students' hand-ins. And that is done uh, using rubrics. Again, it's a way of uh, helping them uh, to actually uh, do the concrete uh, critique. We started out by just saying, well, what is, what is good and what is bad? But we wanted to make a little, help them a little more, um, so that we actually, uh, as you can see here, targeted the uh, the critique uh, a little more. If you want to read more or know more, then just uh, try to read the article. There's uh, more details uh, there. So thanks a lot for uh, listening in. So questions, comments, whatnot. Rotten tomatoes. Yeah, so what can you see? It's, it has some kind of a trouble for students to see the video because based on the mobile phone, if it's not clear enough, can how can you solve this kind of uh, adjustment? 
So when when uh, <clears throat> when the students see the video, it's uh, it's typically got done uh, when we are kind of uh, synchronously together online. Uh, so they are all in. It's actually done soon. Uh, so we are all in Zoom and they're put in breakout rooms. So, so they typically sit with their laptop uh, and they can, I, I haven't had any students complaining about uh, whether or not they could see the videos that the other students have, uh, have made. Um, of course, it, it takes a little time for them to, to figure out, well, how can, how can I actually make a video, but, but using a mobile phone and a, and a piece of paper that, that's pretty easy and then just take your mobile phone and, and film what you're writing on paper. That's, that's very easy and a very easy way for the students uh, to do it. So, so this about creating videos and, and, and doing that, that's, that's probably not what I have seen as the most problematic part. Uh, rather, it's uh, it's them actually being able to to give critique to other students uh, because that that's something that they, they they do not want to to kind of say. Well, you did this not super well. It was not super convincing your argument. So they they kind of feel that that's kind of something that they are they are a little afraid of. So so that's what we practice a lot uh, in class. Okay, so I assume that they all have the good bandwidth, right? So that they can see it clearly. Yes, yes. Um, at least we also having online exams uh, with the same setup where students are uh, participating online with, uh, with a synchronous exam where they are present uh, in groups of three. And they also have their camera with them in, in the examination room and they, they present online in the examination. Um, so, so yes, that, that's something that, that, uh, that's not problematic. And if they do have bandwidth problems, they can actually go to the university. So, so there has been a possibility, or at least in, 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 in this semester for, for the students to go to the university and, and have kind of that, um, if, if they have problems at home. Okay, all right, thank you. Let's some okay. other Ask. Yes. So how about the oral exam? Can you give me an example? Well, the oral exam is, um, is done where the students, they have uh, nine different questions. It's a, it's a broad question on, on, on the topics. Uh, it could be induction proof techniques as an example. Um, and they know that uh, on beforehand from the start of the course. Um, and then, as I said, we, we practice during the course. So when we have this particular topic, the end of that uh, period where, where we focus on that topic, that will be uh, having the students to prepare a video and then uh, using this system of, of uh, feedback for that. And then the actual exam is done uh, in uh, where the students use a blackboard, or in this case, they used a piece of paper or a tablet or whatever they had that they could write upon. And then they do their presentation on, on that given topic. And that given topic has to have at least one proof. Um, <clears throat> and then that's, they have 12 minutes. They know that from, uh, from the start, they have 12 minutes for that. And then we, we rotate and say, well, first review, what are your comments? Uh, on this particular uh, presentation and then he or she has uh, a couple of minutes to give uh, the critique for that and then we take as I said the second review and have uh, that and the second review also have the possibility to say well the first review is set that the base case of that uh, particular uh, proof that uh, the student the, the presenter made was not correct that's definitely I don't see that as a, as a correct one. Um, so, so I hope that was uh, that was more details on the uh, on the um, on on the, uh, the the oral exam. Okay, I think it's Emmanuel is showing the raised hand. Yeah. Okay, Emmanuel, please. Hi. So, also Karen is showing the hand, but I'm uh, gladly uh, going ahead. 
So some of what I wanted to ask has already been uh, uh, discussed. And by the way, thank you for the great presentation. And as a mathematician, I completely agree that you, you know, you, you, you are trying to foster what I think is the important thing about math courses. Now, on the other hand, so, you know, on my list of questions, let me ask the most provocative, right? Because uh, on the other hand, you know, despite the ideal, then there is also a certain amount of material to cover. The provocative question is, with this method that, as I understand, trains the students all semester long to approach a certain exam, um, you know, is there a difference in the, let's say, amount of material in the extensiveness of the syllabus you can cover or somehow res with respect to a syllabus of a regular class? A good question and, and a difficult one because, well, uh, it's, it's we, we try to, as I said, to be aligned with the learning outcomes and, and um, the learning outcomes are so that, that the student has to, to know different proof techniques. That's kind of the, the, the main learning outcome and they should be able to, to do a proof and argue for the correctness of that proof and stuff like that. Uh, so, so with respect to that, I do not think that, that we could cover more in what one could call a traditional class. Um, we could probably, and the students probably would like us to be a little more kind of descriptive, meaning that they would like us to give longer lectures and, and stuff like that. Uh, so so it, it has more to do with kind of the, 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 the structure and the organization of the class, I think, rather than, than the assessment method. If right. that so, answered your question. You, well, let me make sure it does, right? So you, you say the, the course is from the beginning, right? The, the main objective of the course is to be able to argue and, and develop proofs. And so if that's is, is the objective, then of course, there is no better way to reach it as this. Uh, I am enthusiastic about this, of course. If, uh, however, the objective of the course is, you know, you have to know, I don't know, graph colorings, you have to know uh, these and these and these algorithms, and, you know, and there is a certain portfolio of things, then, uh, you know, in this sense, my question was asked, right? That your hmm. regular math class yeah. has... But they, they also have regular math classes where the focus is more on, on math as a noun, as I would say, the, the, exactly. the calculation, or, or as some of my colleagues call it, uh, equation hunting, where the student <laughs> tries, tries to hunt down the equation that actually fits or the, the method that actually fits their, their problem. So, so they have that on beforehand. Um, so I think ideally one would you know, cross blend these two, even in the noun based classes to try to, to go away yeah. from the hunt and incorporate a little bit of this kind of critically approaching. But thank you for your, thank you for your presentation. Okay, I think we have time for one short question here that when grade inflation on the video peer review, uh, they do not give grades, they give uh, feedback. Uh, so so it's, not, it's not that. Um, so thanks a lot for, for being here. I think, I hope all of you will, uh, will turn on your microphone and then give an applause to all the presenters. So thanks a lot and um, see you in uh, the next session. Thank you. Thank you.